Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and in this video we're going to be talking about the 4.6 liter mod motor, or modular engine. So, uh, to kind of go back in history a little bit, uh, this engine came out in the early 90s, pretty much, at least for the Mustangs. Uh, 1996 was the first year that it got the 4.6 liter modular engine. Before that, Ford was using the 5.0 pushrod engine, and uh, pretty much in 1996 when they put this in the Mustang, it was an engine that was somewhat comparable uh, to the 5 liter as far as horsepower but not uh, quite on the same level as torque. So these uh, modular engines, uh, the name modular, uh, even though these engines have a lot of interchangeable parts with their different variants, that's actually not where the term modular came from. Where it actually came from was uh, Ford's tooling process where they would set up the machine work to do and uh, to build different engines. Uh, so that was the modular part where they could change out uh, different machines for their tooling and set up different engines and they could change that within hours where in the past it would take days or even weeks or months to change the tooling around to produce different engines. So the modular term actually comes from uh, how the engine is made, not so much the components of the engine itself. Though a lot of the engine's uh, parts are interchangeable. Um, so. Maybe that's where some of the confusion comes into play. But uh, anyway, the uh, former engine, the 5.0, uh, was a pushrod engine, had a single cam that was in the middle of the block, and pushrods that went up to the valve train. And uh, so this new 4.6 that came out uh, had some better technology. That's the direction Ford was going, and that's uh, kind of why they made the switch, so they could get into the overhead cam. Uh, world and uh, the engines were a bit uh, more efficient. However, they didn't have uh, quite as much torque and the reason why uh, when you're looking at the basic outlay of an engine here you have the bore which is basically how big the piston is going into the cylinder and then you have the stroke which uh, is how far down the piston will go inside uh, the cylinder as well. So the 5 liter engine previous to the 4.6 uh, mod motor uh, had a, um, a 4 inch bore so it was kind of pretty big, 4 inch bore and then it had a 3 inch to 3 and a half inch stroke and um, the mod motor on the other hand was somewhat squared off it was 3.552 inches in bore and then um, 3.543 inches in stroke so it was a pretty square engine and by doing that uh, the engine lost a little bit of torque uh, as a lot of the torque is made up uh, by the engine's stroke as you have the leverage of the connecting rod pushing down on the crankshaft. Uh, the new 5.0 Coyote engine uh, actually also has a pretty square bore and stroke. It's 3.63 uh, inches in bore and uh, 3.647 inches in stroke. Um, so uh, it is still a modular engine, so maybe that's uh, what's helping keep some of that, uh, basically that same thought process together. But uh, Ford had spent one billion dollars developing the 4.6 liter, and uh, as I had mentioned, it was mainly taking some technological leaps in the drivetrain, doing an overhead head cam engine, so it had the camshafts up out of the block and on top of the cylinder heads and uh, with better valve train they went into a dual over head cam on the Cobras and the Mark 8 on the Lincoln and they were getting some uh, pretty good uh, <coughs> progress out of those engines given that it was a lower displacement engine. So uh, one thing I want to talk about is um, stroker kits and compression ratios and kind of how those come into play. So if you have uh, your engine all torn apart like this. This is out of a 2003 SVT Cobra Mustang. It's a forged 8 bolt crank and uh, the 03 04 Cobras were 4 6 liter so it's really common for people if they have the engine apart to consider uh, upping the displacement of the engine going to a 5 liter stroker kit or a 5 3 liter stroker. There's uh, certain ways that you can get more displacement out of the engine. So you could do a bore kit which uh, would make the pistons go bigger. You don't really have too much room for that and same with the stroker kit, you really don't have a lot of room for that either. The 4.6 liter is a pretty tightly packed 
uh, system there for the bottom end and a lot of that's probably because the cylinder heads are so big that uh, there's really not a lot of room before it start coming out of the top of the engine <laughs> but uh, once uh, one thing to also mention the truck engine since uh, they were down on torque with the modular engine and that's where a lot of truck uh, performance is measured they uh, had to go around that by changing a few things bigger runners on the intake and you know they they were really trying to find more torque and so doing a stroker kit is a way that you can increase a lot of your torque and uh, so what a stroker kit basically consists of I have this kind of mocked up to show you you can imagine that uh, this would be inside the cylinder but uh, basically what a stroker kit is going to do is give you a longer crankshaft throw and so therefore you're going to need a little bit longer of a connecting rod and um, that's how you're going to get a little more leverage, a little more displacement. Now, the problem with that is that you want to keep this pin as low down as possible because the closer it gets to the top of the piston, the more heat that it's going to be absorbing, which is going to wear that component out a lot more. Also, on the, uh, the piston, you have the skirt here, which is... Uh, as you can see, there's our, it's already pretty small. So if you're trying to increase this length and also keep this you know, downward, you really are running out of, out of space here. So that's something to consider on the, uh, the stroker kits. And that's why uh, they really can't be stroked too much bigger. Um, and that's why you can't have too much bigger of a, a bore on it too. Uh, one thing when going to a stroker kit, you want to be very careful. You want to pre-assemble the engine, um, pretty much except for the uh, rings, and kind of do a test with it to make sure none of the components um, will uh, will actually hit. Because as they, like like we said, there's really not a lot of room. So where you're getting it, you're having to penetrate deeper into the block with a longer throw here, and. Uh, that uh, there really isn't a lot of room for that. So some of the uh, disadvantages as well, as we were kind of talking about, is uh, the heat that's going to be generated by pushing this pin closer to the uh, to the top of the piston. You're going to have less of a skirt for uh, structure, which we kind of talked about, and uh, obviously cost is another difference that's going to increase why a stroker kit to may be a little bit difficult but uh, you want to be careful too as we mentioned that as these components go deeper into the block you don't want them to contact any of the counterweights uh, for the block itself so now we'll kind of move into uh, compression ratios and so here's how you basically come up with a compression ratio. Here's, here's how it's calculated. So if you take a piston that's in the cylinder and you draw it all the way down to bottom dead center to where it's all the way down, if you measure the distance or the volume that's in that cylinder, including in the cylinder head, because that's where it's ultimately compressed up to. So if you take that amount, you're going to then divide it by the amount of when the piston is at top dead center. And so if you, for example, had a volume basically 10 times larger when it's all the way down to where when it's compressed all the way to the top you only had one tenth of that, uh, that same volume, then your compression ratio would be 10 to 1. So the way that Ford can change compression ratios, or you could even change compression ratios, uh, the easiest way is with the pistons. As you can see on this one, perhaps, this one's a little cleaner. I polished it up a little bit. These pistons can be dished in the top. Okay, so one good thing for that is valve clearance, because now you have valves, that it's an overhead valve engine, valves are getting pretty close to that. And if you see some of, uh, if you're doing an aggressive cam setup, some of them you'll see fly cut where it has four holes out of it if it's a four valve or two for a two valve, but if to give it just a little bit more clearance for those valves. But one good thing is the valve clearance, um, but uh, 
as you can see when it's dished in that's going to lower your compression ratio and so you can imagine if this piston were to go all the way to the top okay if this were a flat top piston where it was completely flat that compression space would be smaller the more you dish this in the space is, you know there's more space in that top compression area so that's how you can change the compression ratio of the engine so higher compression obviously you're packing more air you're packing that air fuel ratio tighter so there's going to be more of an explosion more pressure and uh, so that's how you can increase some of your horsepower now on these supercharged cars um, or if you have a turbo on your car you have to be very careful about your compression ratio too much compression can pre-ignite the fuel just the pressure alone and uh, so if you're running an octane that's lower like 89 or 87 then that fuel by the pressure alone and the heat can explode on its own so that's the last thing you want is as the pistons going up and compressing the air fuel ratio or mixture is you don't want that fuel to pre-ignite before it's supposed to because that's what takes chunks out of the tips of the pistons and uh, really causes some damage to the engine uh, the Compression ratio on this uh, engine, this uh, is from the 0304 Cobra, is eight and a half to one. So it's pretty low compression, and they were doing that for safety reasons, since it's a supercharged engine, and there's already going to be a, a lot of uh, pressure inside the cylinders. Uh, some of these other cars were in the nine range. The new 5.0 Coyote is an 11 to one compression ratio engine, so it's it's up there pretty high. And then the uh, Voodoo 5. A uh, 2 liter in the GT350 uh, is a 12 to 1 compression ratio, so it's super high. And so that's how they're getting a lot of good power out of them, and uh, it's a good, a good uh, strategy for a naturally aspirated engine for sure. But uh, anyway, that's just a little bit on compression ratios and uh, talking a little bit about uh, the 4 6 liter engine. If you have any comments that you want to add, go ahead and post them below and uh, see if we can have some good conversation come from this. Thanks for watching, guys.